in this lecture we'll be talking about the distance vector algorithm now the distance vector algorithm is based on the Bellman Ford equation so let's first try to understand this equation so let's first understand some of the terminology so dxy denotes the cost of the least cost path from x to y so to go reach from x to y one thing that we know is it has to go through one of the neighbors of x so what Bellman Ford equation does is the following. It tries to find out the, the cost, the direct cost of reaching from x to any neighbor v, which is denoted by cxv. Now, dvy is the cost of reaching from that neighbor to y, or more specifically, it's the least cost path for reaching from v to y. Now, to determine the least cost path of reaching from x to y, it has to go through one of the neighbors. So what we do is we take this minimum over all the neighbors of x and hence we will be able to determine dxy. So let's see how the Bellman Ford works through an example. Let's assume that you want to find out the least cost path from u to z. Now there are three neighbors of u, x, v and w. And let's assume that you know the least cost path from these neighbors to z. To reach z from v, the least cost path is 5. And if you look at the figure, you'll know that that path is from v, x, y, and z. To reach z from x, the least cost path is 3. And to reach uh, z from w, the least cost path is 3 as well. So now to determine the least cost path from u to z, what we have to do is we have to find out the paths through each of its neighbors and then take the minimum. So Let's just find out the cost of the path if you go through V. That is going to be CUV plus DVZ. Now CUV, if you look at the figure, is 2. And DVZ, as we just mentioned, is going to be 5. So this cost of this path through V is going to be 7. Now if you, if you decide to go through X, the direct cost from U to X is 1. And DXZ has a cost of 3. And similarly, if you decide to go through W, the total cost is going to be 8. 5 for the direct link cost between U and W, and 3 for the cost of the path from W to Z. And if you see, the minimum turns out to be 4, and that happens when you decide to go through X. So this is a way how Bellman Ford equation works. Now this Bellman Ford equation is at the heart of the distance vector algorithm and it's going to be used to, to run the particular algorithm. So next let's uh, try to understand the distance vector algorithm. So in the distance vector algorithm, the goal is to find out the least cost path from a node to another node. So it's a decentralized algorithm in which every node tries to determine its cost to every other node in the network and it tries to do it independently and in each node tries to do it individually. So let's assume that capital DXY is the estimate of the least cost path from X to Y. So it's an estimate and as time passes this estimate is going to get refined and what we hope the algorithm would achieve after some time is that it would get to the actual least cost value from X to Y. So what does every node know? Each node knows its direct cost to each of its neighbors, which is CXV. This we can uh, readily assume. And what every node maintains is that it maintains something called a distance vector, which is a vector of the distances to all the other nodes in the network. So let's see how this, uh, how this algorithm works. So the key idea is that every node sends its distance vector estimate to its neighbors periodically. Now, when it sends it, it's also going to get new distance vector estimates from its neighbors. Now, using the updated distance vector information that it gets from its neighbors, it uses the Bellman Ford equation to determine the, the least cost path to the other nodes in the network. And the hope is if you let this algorithm run for certain duration of time, what would happen is the estimates would then converge to the actual least cost values.
So this are the, one of the beauty of this algorithm is that the algorithm is iterative, it's asynchronous, that is the two nodes do not need to communicate, do not need to execute at the same time and, the alg and every time there is a link change, it triggers a, a message to be sent from a node to its neighbors which then use it to recompute their paths. So it's a distributed algorithm and, and it requires no centralized collection of information as any other distributed algorithm would do. So at every node, what happens is each node is weigh, weights, send the weight state to see if the link costs actually change. Now the link costs change, what it would do is it will first recompute this estimates to see if the distance vector in its table actually changes. If there's any change, what it would do is it would then notify its neighbors which would then do the same process independently and then if there is another change they would then notify their neighbors and so on and so forth. So let's see the working of this algorithm through an example. So there are three nodes in this network x, y and z and they are connected as shown there. Now every node is going to maintain this table that's the, that's the essence of the distance vector algorithm. So node X has a table, node Y has a table, and node Z has another table. Now what does node X know initially? What it knows is the least cost value to reach itself, which is zero. To reach Y, which is its neighbor, there is a cost of two, and to reach Z, the cost is seven. Now, it has still not received any information from Y or Z, so the distance vectors from Y and Z are all marked as infinities. Now, now let's focus on node Y. Now what node Y knows is its cost to its neighbors. It, can, it knows it can reach X directly with a cost of two. The cost of reaching Y from Y is zero. And to reach Z from Y, the cost is one. Similarly, Z also maintains a table. Now, in the distance vector algorithm, all nodes are going to share this. A table with their neighbors. So X receives two such tables, one from Y and one from Z. As soon as X receives the distance vector from Y, what it does is it uses this distance vector and updates its table. So essentially this red circle 201 uh, in Y's table is what X receives and it uses that and populates that information from Y. Similarly, it's going to receive this distance vector 710 from Z and it's going to use that to populate its table. Now, once it has received this information, X is now going to calculate the cost to Y and Z. Now, the cost to itself is, is zero. So now let's see how it calculates the cost to reach Y. For this, it will use the Bellman Ford equation. So to reach Y, x can either go directly to y or it can reach y through its other neighbor z. Now if it decides to go through y, so then it, the cost, the direct link cost is cxy which we read from the graph which is 2 and the cost of reaching y from y is 0 which we read from the distance vector that y sent uh, x. So the cost of reaching y from x is going to be 2 plus 0 which is 2. Now to, to reach y from z what it's going to do is it is going to, to uh, take into account the direct link cost from x to z which is denoted by cxz which is a value of 7 and the cost of reaching y through z that is dzy which once again it's going to read from the distance vector that was shared to it by z, which is a cost of 1. Now the minimum of 2 and 8 is 2, hence this value is populated to be 2. That is the cost to reach y from x is populated as 2. Now let's see what's the cost to reach z. Now once again, x can reach z either directly or through its neighbor y. To reach z through y, the direct link cost from x to y is 2 and the cost of reaching y from, uh, sorry, z from y using the distance vector table is 1 because that's what y sent 
uh, x. The cost of reaching directly x to z is 7 and the cost of reaching z to z is 0. So we are trying to find out the minimum of 3 and 7 which is a value of 3. So 3. So we can see that the distance vector estimate of x now changes once it receives this table from y and z. Now similarly y and z are also going to receive tables. For example, y is going to receive the table from x and z. z is going to receive the table from x and y. And then they are going to update their tables. Now, if you see, what happens is y's table does not change. Whereas z's table changes and the value becomes 310. So in the next step, what is going to happen is x and z are going to share their tables. y is not going to share the table because there is no change in the distance vector of y. That is shown in the third step. If you look between steps 1 and 2, you will see 6 arrows. But if you see between steps 2 and 3, you will only see 4 arrows. This is because y is not sharing its table with x and z between steps, and steps 2 and 3, simply because the distance vector of y did not change. Now, using these newly arrived uh, tables, if x, y, and z recompute their tables, what happens is you would see that there is no further change. When there is no further change, none of the nodes would exchange the tables with their neighbors, and hence the distance vector algorithm would come to a halt. So this is how a distance vector algorithm works, and with this we'll conclude the lecture.